Hi, Dave here, G3 LLC. Hang on to your chairs, put your tin hats on. This is going to be a bit of a ride through another formula or formulae, which are particularly important to help you buy, keep, consider, whatever, or just ruminate on transceivers. Because last time we talked about watts per kilogram, particularly important, I think, for QRP, low power operations. And also we talked about dollars per watt because particularly where polar modulation has come into this world of amateur radio transceivers, it is arguably a pivotal point disruption because it's gonna mean we buy transceivers in a different way going forward. And as a result of that video, I had some great comments, thank you ever so much. One in particular, and it came through the DX Commander Discord group, is how about dollars, pounds, euros, whatever your currency, per dB, and then got us thinking about dollars, pounds, euros, whatever, for a S point or proportion of an S point. So first of all, I want to put something to you, which is, I think, first of all, we are being ripped off once we leave the land of low power QRP and go to QRO, high power, I'm going to tell you, once you go over 100 watts, up to 100 watts, great value, over 100 watts, is this rip-off amateur radio? And here are the numbers. 1972 adjusted for the monetary value today, a one kilowatt linear amplifier cost you £160 then, equivalent to 1000 let's call it £1,300 or whatever your currency is today. But however, today, this is mid-market price, right? Mid-market price. £3,500 for that same kilowatt. And they're going to say, Dave, but they've got a lot of uh, good gubbins in there as well. Absolutely true. But just we're just doing this on power, right? Just on power. So 1,000 watts was once 160 quid, 1.2 thousand pounds. Now 3,500, almost tripled in price. I'll put it to you, but the gubbins, that extra gubbins, is that extra gubbins worth three times the price? Interestingly as well, also in 2004, here in Great Britain, Ofcom, our regulator, enabled us to go from 400 watts pet maximum for the full license up to 1,000 straight away. Did the radio shops offer us a discount? No, they didn't. So 1995, for example, it would cost in today's money roughly two and a half thousand pounds for a kilowatt amp. 2005, 10 years later, a year after that increase, 4,382 pounds in today's money because obviously there was a bit of what we could call generously reverse discounting then. So you might say a bit of a bargain now to come down in price, Dave, but blimmin' heck, that is expensive. And let me explain why. Now going through my cheat sheet here, you think let's start on the IC705. Let's do that because that's a sort of like default poetry. £1,300. And it gives you with an external battery, which would cost you, let's say, an extra 60 quid on top of that, you're now putting out um, 10 watts and it's costing you £1,300, as I've said. Now for 100 watts, and this is where I say 100 watts is good value, 10 times the power, 10 dB more. This is why my uh, pounds or dollars for dB gets a little bit muddled, but it gets clearer once we jump above this. Because by the time you've added a linear amp, let's say, to put yourself up to 100 watts for an IC705, subject to your licensing conditions, of course, it's going to cost you roughly 2,000 quid. Now, the IC7300 Mark II, which is either out or about to come out by the time you watch this, that is £1,300 for 100 watts. I know there's lots of and and ands of the 705 VHF bands and stuff like that, but a 705 with all the gubbings and the ability to put out 100 watts is roughly £2,000, and I see 7300 with the very latest ICOM spec, DSP, all that sort of stuff, is 1,300. Say so anything around the 100 watts, mid-market radios are great value. But what does 
first of all, what does that extra 10 times power give you? We've said it's 10 dB, but it's 1.67 S points. Remembering that not all radios report S points in the same way. Yes, the ARRL came up with the 3 dB for half an S point and 6 dB for an S point. We all know that, but we know not all radios report the same. And if you use HF a lot, it seems that all radios are 5 and 9. Please stop that. Anyway, so you okay with that so far? Oh, 10 times gives you 10 dB, which is 1.67 S points. Now, when we get into the realm of one kilowatt linear amps, let's say you've bought that IC7300, you want to use it out on a poter, and you also want to use it at home, and you have the license, you've put the study in, you've got the level of competence, and you're consciously competent or consciously incompetent, which arguably is a safer person. If you have got all those qualifications and you want to use that one kilowatt by buying a linear amplifier, bearing in mind where I've said the mid-market price is, you are going to get another 10 times again. So you're going to get an extra 10 dB, so therefore 10 watts base, 100 watts extra 10 dB, 1000 watts extra 10 dB, so you're now 20 dB up or you're 10 dB up on a 7300, and that's going to give you an extra 1.67 S points again. So let's just remember that. For going from 100 watts to 1000 watts, and I've just told you the mid-market price for a linear amp at the moment here in Great Britain in Blighty is three and a half thousand pounds. You're going to get 1.67 S points of difference for that 3,500 spend. It gets better though. Now, let's say you go into your favorite radio shop and they um, are brilliant salespeople. And to give you an example of this, it's a bit like uh, a friend of mine Let's just call him Duncan for the sake of this. He went in to buy a motorbike. And when he went to buy his motorbike, after years of not riding a motorbike, he went into the bike shop and the salesman of the bike shop was brilliantly trained. And he did what you're supposed to do when you're brilliantly trained in sales. You do the puppy dog clothes. So he got Duncan to cock his leg over what was at the time the most advanced, the most expensive motorbike, which was the Honda Fireblade and he cocked his leg over it and he sat on it. He said, but I'll never use one of these. It's just got far too much power. And the salesman said, Duncan, you don't have to pull the throttle all the way back. And guess what? He bought the Fireblade. So that's just like you go into a radio shop and you go, I just want something that does 100 watts. And the salesman says, yes, but come and play with this radio that's got lots of knobs and it's got a linear amplifier next to it with lots of knobs and you can pray out a thousand watts. You'll probably never use it, but the future proves you. And that person says, I'm just, I've got a basic license. I can only put out 20, 25 watts. I say, never mind, you don't have to turn the knob all the way up. And they go, oh yes, and that's it. Next minute they walk out with lots of big boxes. Let's say you're convinced to buy the Acom 2000A at 5,200 pounds. Now they put out, as you've probably seen browsing the internet, 1.5 kilowatts. Now you're not going to use that 1.5 kilowatts. People tell me they get 500 watts of losses on the way to their antenna. So I'm going to base these calculations on you spending 5,200 pounds to do the legal kilowatt. As you know, that's an extra 10 dB from 100 watts to 1,000. That's 520 pounds if we use the calculation pounds per dB or dollars or whatever. 520 pounds per dB and 3,113 pounds per S point. Remember, you're just getting 1.67 extra S points to give you that ability when you hear a special event station at the weekend or a Bury DX and you want to get above the pileup. It's gonna cost you that much money, over 3,000 pounds for those extra uh, S points. Now, it might be that the radio shop you go in and just say, for simplicity, you don't want the ACOM, what you need is the ICOM, it's the PW1HF. That once again will give you an extra 10 dB. That will cost you 500 pounds per dB or 3,000 pounds per S point. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a hell of a lot of money just for a little bit more signal. 
And this is where the pivot for polar modulation comes in. Because let's take it that let's say you say, well, what we'll do is I'll have a separate POTA radio, you know, N plus one, another formula, right? You can never have enough radios, always N plus one. So you can have a separate one, for example, an LC705, it might be a 7300, it might be the Yesu equivalent or yada, 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 aircraft. But what you're going to do is you are going to buy the ultimate radio for contesting that has the best front end, can deal with big pile-up signals either side of you, can really filter them out, and has everything that's optimal, for example, multiple antenna ports, da 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 and let's just say you've got the best antenna already, you can have all that, and you're going to spend, let's say, £6,000, that's what they cost, and you'll get anything up to 200 watts from that, from all the marquee top radios, the ones with lots of knobs, because we know radiometers love knobs and love twiddling knobs, and that's why they're also called transceivers. No, but anyway, sensibly. Um, so what you're going to do is 100 watts, 200 watts is going to cost you so 100 watt radio remember and some of these very expensive ones only put out 100 watts some 100 watt radios cost you 1300 some cost you 6000 quid because you're paying for lots of extra gubbins and some of those 6000 radios that pound radios very generously give you an extra 100 watts half an s point half an s point so 6000 quid for the same basic signal at the other end. Polar modulation radios, I would say the Flex Aurora at the QRO end, high power end, seems to be the first that has everything all the others have for the same price, roughly, but puts out 500 watts. But bear in mind, for those other radios that cost £6,000, to have a 1,000 watts, what you've now got to have is a linear amplifier sitting at the side of you, which you can see you can pay up to an extra £5,000. So you're in ballpark eleven to £12,000 to get roughly the same for double the price. Extra 500 watts. And what's that extra 500 watts going to get you? It's going to get you half an S point. Is it really worth it? That's an interesting question that only you can answer. And the other thing that we bought from the video before, coming down to the QRP end, if you remember Hans's presentation on the RSGB, have a look at the RSGB YouTube channel, is that the QMX Plus puts out 5 watts, but people have equated that to 12 watts because of its form of modulation. And thanks ever so much for the innovator of the Flex, Tony, who uh, dropped me an email, and I really appreciate it. And what Tony said is, that is because it uses not just polar, but it uses CE SSB. And as a result, that gives it that edge. Now, if you look at the research, and I'll mention the research up here. If you look at the research, the research suggests that probably two and a half to three extra dB is produced as a result of CE SB. Now, other radios use that, of course. Other transceivers use that. You need to look at that and need to question the owners of the shop. Um, or the salespeople who are selling you whatever, um, that you need to have that because it's a key feature, right? Not just polar, but that. But you imagine things like the Flex, not only have got polar, but they've also got CSSB as a, the QMX. You think that's crazy, isn't it? £150 for a kit, uh, pre-built, and probably by the time you put other gummies on there, 200 quid for QRP, weight per kilogram and also what you get bang for your buck that's ridiculous but looking at the top end bit about are oh, we being ripped off on qro when you consider that polar modulation in things like the flex aurora means you get a smaller box smaller heat sink because they use far less energy you pull less off your electricity cost you less to run to produce 500 watts smaller box less energy to produce that 500 watts cost you lower running power and you've got something with all the gubbins that all the others have got which is quite incredible so that's where i think our buying decisions are going to change going forward these other formulas are going to help us because we're going to have to think about take a step back and think about when we buy transceiver now do we want polar or not polar because what are we losing as a result of not having polar in the form of dollars per dB or dollars 
per S point. And I think if you're in that big spending game and you're big into contesting, you want all those frills, yeah, it's an interesting one. But I say down the other end, Kira X Plus is uh, exciting quite a few people and some really great videos on YouTube to look at. Thank you ever so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. You know, there's so many other things you could be doing. Look, whatever you do with your radio, have a good time. If you like this, subscribe, all that sort of stuff, and you'll see me doing poter things and all sorts, but more stuff like this. So thanks again. Try a bit. 73s. Merry Christmas.